اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد سلام عليكم يا علي مدد tonight as we all know is the beginning of my new series of lecture about the 14 masumin alayhi salam allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad so inshallah every tuesday i will discuss about one imam about one masum we will talk about the fazail of the imam the status and the virtues and of course the history this series will be very beneficial for our young youth because I will discuss step by step and give very short but important brief introductions. So easy that even the young children will be able to understand majalises. So today let's start our series by discussing of our first masoom and the last prophet, the messenger of Allah, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is a prophet in Islam who is the last messenger of Allah. The mission of Prophet Muhammad was essentially the advancement of monotheism and morality. He was also a social reformist and he was the last prophet of Allah. His major miracle, well, there is no doubt, was the Holy Quran. Although our Prophet was born in the polytheistic society of Arabia, he never worshipped any idols. He also avoided the inappropriate manners that were rampant, which means that were very common in the pre-Islamic Arabia. Neither in the pre-Islamic Arabia. He was chosen by Allah. Now this is very important because this causes a lot of confusion. He was chosen by Allah as a prophet, but he declared that he was a prophet at the age of 40. Now a lot of people will get confused that between this, he was always a prophet. Before he was even born, he was a prophet. But he declared openly that he was the messenger of Allah at the age of 40. And there is a huge difference between him being a prophet and him declaring that he was a prophet. So for our young youth, it is very important for them to know Prophet Muhammad was always a prophet, but he declared openly to the public that he was the last messenger of Allah at the age of 40 years old. Although the polytheists of Mecca persecuted him and his followers for many years, Prophet Muhammad and his followers, they did not give up following Islam. And some of his famous followers were mentioned in my previous lecture of my old series of lectures. After 13 years of preaching in Mecca, he immigrated to Medina. And now, furthermore, we will discuss about the immigration from Mecca to Medina. So stay here in a couple of minutes. We will talk more about the immigration. This immigration, also known as Hijra, marked what was the beginning of the Islamic calendar. But now, let's start to talk more about our Prophet before we talk about the history. Our Prophet was the son of Hazrat Abdullah. Hazrat Abdullah was the son of Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, who was the son of Hazrat Hashim. The Prophet's mother, her name was Bibi Amina Salam Alayha. The date of birth of our Prophet is the 17th of Rabbil Awwal, according to the majority Shia scholars. The first Amul Fil, Amul Fil is the year of the elephant. This was the year in which Abraha and his elephants, they attempted to come and destroy the Holy Kaaba. They att attempted, they did not succeed. Prophet Muhammad married Bibi Khatija alayha, at the age of 25 years old. Bibi Khatija lived with our Prophet for 25 years and she passed away 10 years after Baysat. Now, this might cause some confusion. What is Baysat? Baysat is when the Prophet declared that he was the messenger of Allah openly. 
Baby Khatija gave birth to few children. The boys died in childhood. But the most famous daughter, and not just the most famous daughter, the one and only daughter of Bibi Khatija and our prophets was Bibi Fatima. Salamullah alayha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Lady Fatima was the only daughter. There was no other daughter and there is no doubt that Lady Fatima was the only daughter. This means that Bibi Fatima was the only daughter of our Prophet and Bibi Khatija. And we have proof from a hadith from a vast majority of history books. We have proof to prove that Bibi Fatima, Lady Fatima, was the only daughter of Bibi Khatija and Rasulullah. But now I know that I talked about Baysat. So I personally feel like it's important for me to give more details about Baysat and what happened in Baysat. According to the 12 Rashi'as, as I mentioned before, the mission of our, the mission of the prophets will begin on the 27th of Rajab. In the years prior of his mission, this means before the beginning of his mission, Prophet Muhammad would spend a lot of time in solitude. He would worship Allah. He would spend one month in solitude in a cave that was called Ghari, the cave of Hira, or some of us know it as Ghari Hira, but in English it says the cave of Hira. Most importantly for our youth, the name of this cave was Hira, the cave of Hira. This was located in the mountains and our prophets would spend one month there praising and worshipping Allah. He was in the cave of Hira when the mission began and the verses of the Quran were revealed to him. Later, Prophet Muhammad would describe this event. But as I mentioned, my goal with these lectures is really just to give a short and brief introduction for our young youth to understand. So now we have talked about before declaring. Now let's see what happens once our prophets declared that he was the prophet of Allah and he was the last prophet of Allah. After he declared his prophethood, he preached and he invited people to Allah for 13 years in Mecca. But after 13 years with the orders of Allah, he migrated from Mecca to Medina on the night of Shab Hijrat. As we know, Shab Hijrat is the night when our Prophet asked Imam Ali to sleep on his bed so he could migrate from Mecca to Medina. Now, let me tell you more in details because the night of Shab Hajj, Shab Hijrat, is extremely, extremely important for everybody. On the night of Shab Hijrat, our Prophet asked Imam Ali to sleep in his bed. Now, Imam Ali, he did not say, Oh, Prophet, if I sleep on your bed, will I be safe? Why did Prophet ask Imam Ali to sleep on his bed? Because the non-believers of Mecca had plotted to murder Rasulullah once he woke up from his sleep. That is why our Prophet asked Imam Ali to take his position and sleep that night. Imam Ali did not say, Oh, Prophet, will I be safe? Imam Ali said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, if tonight I sleep in your bed, will you be safe? And that is when our Prophet told him, Yes, Ali, with, if you sleep on my bed, I will be safe. Then Rasulullah, he asked Imam Ali, Oh, Imam Ali, when you sleep in the bed, when you fall asleep, I want you to sleep in my positions, in my position. Now, if we just analyze that, we have control of ourselves once we are awake and when our mind is functioning when we are awake. But once we are sleeping, we have absolutely no control of ourselves, especially when it comes to which position we will sleep. But look at Imam Ali, that Imam Ali was able to control his position even when he was sleeping. And that is why he slept just like our Prophet in the same position. Now, a lot of people, a lot of Azadar youth, they think that Shab Hijrat, the Waqiyah, it finishes here, but no. Our Prophet had also advised Imam Ali that when Imam Ali, when it was the turn of Imam Ali to migrate from Mecca to Medina, our Prophet asked Imam Ali, I want you to return the valuables of the non believers to their owners. 
This, once again, can cause a lot of confusion. But we should analyze it step by step. The non-believers at this time, they did not have any belief towards our prophet's prophethood. But what they did believe was that our prophet was an honest person who they could give their valuables because even they knew that if anything happens to the prophet, the prophet will still make sure that their valuables are kept safe and safely returned to them. That is why Imam Ali was given a duty by Rasulullah that before Imam Ali, he himself migrates from Mecca to Medina. He takes the valuables of the non-believers and he gives them to the non-believers safe and sound. My Azadar, this is extremely important to understand. Why? Because the non-believers... They did not believe in the prophethood of Rasulullah. But you know what they believed? They believed that Rasulullah was a trustworthy person, an honest person who they could deposit their valuables without any concerns. And they knew 100% whatever happens, Rasulullah would find a way and would return their valuables to them. This was the status of Rasulullah, that even the non-believers were trusting Rasulullah with their valuables. Please recite aloud salabat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. But now, before we end this lecture, I feel like it's important for me to go a little bit back to my subject, which was the history of Rasulullah. Now that we have talked about the migration from Mecca to Medina, let's talk about Medina. Now I want all Azadars to listen carefully. Now let's talk about Rasulullah once he migrated to Medina. During our Prophet's lifetime in Medina, which was only 11 years by the way, there were so many battles our Prophet had to go through. Some of the battles are the Battle of Badr, the most famous battles, the Battles of Badr, Ahad, Khandak, and Khaybar. These are some and the most famous battles known among us youth. Inshallah, we will discuss precisely and detail with detail about these battles when I make a new series of lectures about the battles of the Prophet. But right now, let's head back to our subject, which is Rasulullah. Now, before we come towards an ending, please recite aloud salabat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. In the beginning of 11th after Hijrah, on the day of 28th of Safar, our Prophet was murdered in Medina due to severe poisoning. He is buried inside his own room in his house and he murdered at the age of 63. It is mentioned in Nahj al-Balagha that at the time of his demise, the Prophet's head lay, was laying on the chest of Imam Ali. It is mentioned in Nahaj al-Balagha that during the time of the demise of our Holy uh, Prophet, his head was laying on the chest of Imam Ali. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My Azadar, we have concluded talking about Rasulullah. In this lecture, we saw some extreme important events. The most important being the migration, Shabi Hijrat, and of course we saw Baysat, and we talked about Baysat. Not only did we talk about these events, we also talked about our holy prophets before the migration, after the migration, before Baysat, and after Baysat. These series of lectures are very important for our young youth to listen because by listening to these simple lectures, they can understand the majalises of our scholars. Inshallah, the more we learn about the Holy Prophet, the more we study the 14 Masumin alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, our knowledge will increase and our marifat will increase. My goal for our young youth is that we need to study about the 14 infallibles, the 14 Masumin. Otherwise, understanding the majalises of our scholars can be a little difficult. But if our young youth listens to these small, easy, easy lectures, they will be able to understand the lectures of our scholars. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.